Hello everybody and welcome back! Today we're gonna be talking about the wingback row in FUBU Manager 2024. And when I say wingback row, I mean left and right defenders in a four at the back system. We're gonna be talking about tactics, we're gonna be talking about tips and tricks, we're gonna be talking about important attributes, traits, and how the different duties perform on the pitch. We're gonna be showing some actual footage and quite a lot of other things. If you wanna to skip to a certain section, check the link down below and skip to it. So let's go. Okay, so the wingback row is available on support, defend, and attacking duty. No matter if you play a three at the back, four at the back, or five at the back. Most of the examples and most of the things we're going to be talking about today are going to be in the four at the back scenario, although they may also apply to the three at the back and five at the back, but just keep that in mind. Now, first things first, the similarities. No matter if you pick or choose the defensive, supporting or attacking duty in your wrestling defense, these players are going to be doing kind of the same thing. They're going to be holding their ground. They're going to be occupying the spaces that you expect them to. So they're going to be roaming somewhere at the edge of your box depending on what the opposition is doing so they're gonna be there they're gonna be doing their defending where you expect them in transition most of the times they will also do the same thing they will be making themselves generally available for the ball playing defenders and for your defensive midfielders to receive the ball and to try to progress it further up the pitch Despite the fact that the description of the wingback says that most of the time they're playing alone on the wing without a winger support, we have to make a huge remark here. Players in Football Manager 24 are moving quite smart. They're utilizing spaces in a good way and they are always keeping in mind what other roles they have in front of them, around them. So whenever they're doing their things in attack, they are kind of aware of what's going around them and they will try to not get in the way of their teammates so yes they usually play without a wing support but you should not be scared to use for example an inverted forward or an inverted winger because they will be cutting inside and there's going to be quite a lot of space for your wing back on the wing if they are a wing back on defend you can actually use them with a winger and someone else that's going to be stretching the field as well in front of them and this is why the wingback on defense is quite an underutilized role and not a lot of people are using it and it is not really often seen in today's football in real life. So when I say wingback on defense, I want you to think of someone like Gary Neville. Okay, he's primarily a defender. He's going to be taking his part in the build-up. He's going to be providing some width in the attack. He's going to be passing it with the winger or whoever is around him. But his first thing in his mind is defending. I should be holding my ground as a defender, I should be always aware that we can be hit on the counter and it is my duty to be back there and to help the defense. Okay, I want you to have a look at this guy here, Josef Cizik. He is our wing back on defense in this game, Levski playing versus Liverpool. We have just lost the ball somewhere around here, trying to build an attack from the left. First of all, he was not really going forward trying to replicate what the other wingback is doing. He's complete wingback, by the way. So the wingback on defense, he is kind of holding the line with the two center halves. This guy is center half, this guy is center half. So there he is. He's there to protect the line. He is an integral part of the defensive structure we have right now. And let's go. Let's see what happens. Okay, here. Oh, okay, here it is. This is one of the center halves. We have step up more. The step up more forces him to step up and try and get the ball from Moises Caicedo. And what does the wingback do in this moment? He is actually trying to cover the center half. There he is. He's holding his position, by the way, right now. Therefore, we are obviously very open right here. And we can see the shot from distance. But the important thing that I want you to remember from this footage, the wingback on defense, he was there in the line of defense alongside the center halves. He was ready to react. And he was actually covering for the center half, stepping up and trying to retrieve the ball from the opposition. Now, an attacking scenario. We are starting with a throw-in and it's going to be Chizik taking it. Here he is, throwing it in and look at what he does. He is starting his movement backwards and here it is, he's holding his ground. There is quite a lot of space in front of him. If he was on another duty, support or attack, 
he may have utilized it, but look at him. Nope, nope, I'm not running forward, I'm not running forward. Okay, we lost it. Where he is now? He is in a great position to actually recover the ball. So, in attack, he sees opportunities. Sometimes he's going to cross it. Sometimes he's going to get further forward. But generally, he is someone that is going to be roaming around the center line. He's going to be quick to come back and cover the counter. So he's a very, very good player when you need someone to, first of all, think about his defensive duties. Moving on to the wing back on support, way different player. You don't see any of the hold your ground, hold your position, cross from deep, none of that. He has the get further forward. When you think of a wing back on support, I want you to think of someone like Luke Shaw. He's someone that will generally get further forward. He's going to get a new position half. He's going to be delivering crosses from the byline he's going to be cutting inside sometimes not a lot but he's going to be doing it for you he can also score goals from that position he will be very smart about whether he has someone in front of him or not so if you have them alone without a winger or inside forward anyone else occupying a position on the wing in front of them they will sometimes be very very aggressive with the positions that they take if there is someone in front of them most of the time they will be a little bit more conservative they will be playing one twos they will be participating in the build-up they will be someone with a lot of presence in your attack on the wing as we said most of the differences we can expect from the wing back whether he's on defense support or attack is in his attacking movement so let's have a look at this footage I want you to pay attention to Frank Garcia. He's currently a wing back on support. Now, what's going on here? First of all, look at the position he's occupying. If he was a wing back on defend, he would have been somewhere around here. I want you to think the footage that we just saw. Now, where he is, way more tucked in, way more advanced in position. So we are here losing the ball. He is now in a center mid position. Okay, we win possession back. He is now getting further away, getting to the wing. Recycling possession. He is somewhere there to receive the ball. Okay, so this is an interesting moment. Now, this guy, Mbabu, he is an inside forward. He ducked in, he received it from Adams, and now Frank Garcia sees all of this space in front of him. If he was on defending duty, he would have never gone further forward than here, or maybe here, or he would have been holding the ball. He would probably receive it here, look for a 1-2, look for a way to pass the ball to someone, and then try to get back as quick as he can, or hold his ground around somewhere here. Now, this guy is on support. Look at him. He's doing the run. He receives the ball, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna cut in. No one's challenging me, no one's challenging me. Okay, then I'm gonna shoot it. And he scores. This is why the description says that they are used to be playing alone on the wing, without a winger support. So here he was. The inside forward was tucked in. He could have actually utilized the space. And that's what he did. All right, we're now going to be looking at the wing back on attack. The most interesting of them all. The example we're going to be looking at is going to be Jose Gaia. This is a Valencia save first season. Jose Gaia finished with 23 assists. And one of the reasons is because the wing back on attack gets an additional instruction it is cross from byline so difference in personal instructions between wing back on support and attack is cross from byline now what the wing back on attack does in attack he will of course get further forward and he's gonna cross it he's just gonna spam crosses for you so when you think of a player i want you to think of either trent alexander arnold or david beckham yeah you heard me correctly david beckham what he used to do in for man united not not in real madrid what he used to do for man united was doing something that nowadays according to full manager is something that a wing back on attack does he's just being there he's taking on his man if he can he's gonna try and dribble and win some space he's gonna act no way near as aggressive as an inside forward does nowadays or a winger or whatever it is but he is gonna be putting a lot of crosses in the box and this is a season that valencia won the Premier division with 91 points and valencia we were top of the chart with most crosses completed 216 which is over 30 more than the second one 
Keep in mind that the cross is completion success rate. Oh, we're 12th. Uh, just 15% of the crosses we put in the box were actually successful. So, of course, this is not just due to the wing back on attack. We also had a complete wing back on attack on the other side, and they both do have the cross from byline. They're going to be putting a lot of crosses for you in. If you don't have someone to be actually on the end of that crosses, maybe, just maybe, consider not using a wing back like that, or maybe modify their personal instructions. So, before we get to the actual footage of Jose Gaia spamming a couple of crosses that other players get on the end of keep in mind there are gonna be crosses maybe you wanna control the height of them i know most of the people this season very much prefer low crosses i used to love whipped crosses previously i've also used floated crosses this season and i love it but you need someone that is capable of finishing a chance in the air on the other end of the cross therefore be mindful of that all right, so let's have a look at this clip. We are currently looking at Jose Gaia against Real Madrid. We are having a throw-in on the right-hand side. First of all, keep track of his position. Look at where he is. He is the left wing back on attack, so therefore everything around here is maybe his area to cover. Now, he is acting as the fourth player, has to the pitch right now. And because we have no winger on that side, we have a shadow striker that is actually in the channel. Jose Gaia is acting as an out-and-out -out winger. We are in attack, he considers himself a winger. So, what happens? We lose the ball, he was kinda trying to transition back, we want it back quickly, but here he is right now. And by the way, I told you about David Beckham. If David Beckham was playing on the left side, where would he have been this moment? Like, there he is. Okay, there is a lot of ground on the wing that he can cover. He does it. He does it. He runs down the flank. He crosses it and Popelo's on the end of it. By the way, first of all, Popelo is a Segundo Volante on attack. If you missed the video of Segundo Volantes, check it out. It's somewhere here. And he arrived late in the box. He arrived late in the box to be on the end of this cross so Gaia put in at least 23 of these crosses throughout the season and this kind of makes you think of the fact that crossing a very important attribute but what are the other important attributes okay this time I'm gonna answer it backwards again who am I never using as a wing back first of all in terms of height if they are someone that is a wing back on support or attack I would refrain from using people that are above 180 or 186 centimeters tall. They're getting a little bit clunky. Agility is not really there. They're going to be participating a little bit more. You're going to need a little more speed from them. So if you find someone that is able to doing that, ignore my height restrictions. But this is my general rule of thumb. And if we are using them as a wing back on defense, Forget about it. Wing back on defend. If they are capable of ball playing defenders, ignore the height. Just use them there. They're going to do the job. Now, below 168 centimeters tall, they're getting too short. They are eventually a part of your back line. So if every single cross goes above their head, you're going to be annoyed. So just don't use them. Now that we've actually seen footage of what they do, and this is why I chose this format this time, we started by checking out some footage of how do they behave. It's quite easy to actually answer the question, what attributes do they need? Of course, below average teamwork and work rate, uh, not really the thing. You need them to be actually be there for everyone else in the back line, in the midfield, sometimes in attack as well. So you need them to be able to cover this ground. You need them to have the work rate to participate in all the parts of the game. Therefore, they need the stamina. Obviously, they also need the pace because if they're not wing back on defense, they will be most of the time out of position when you lose the ball. So in transition... They want to. They will usually get back and try to cover their spot in defense. But they will need to be able to transition quickly. Therefore, you need to have high pace, high acceleration, good stamina. So that they can actually get backwards when they need to. Now, they will be also part of the build-up. And they will be 
quite a lot of time involved in attack. Therefore, we need him to have good passing, good dribbling, good vision. Oh my god, so many things. And as I said, crossing is kind of important for them because if you don't, on purpose, restrict their crossing, they're going to be doing quite a lot of it. And if they're wasteful with it, you're going to get annoyed. All right, it's time we talk tactics. And the first thing is that, as we've seen in the description before, wingbacks, they are used to working without a winger support in front of them. But when we say winger support in front of them, we kind of exclude inside forwards and inverted wingers. Because inside forwards and inverted wingers, they're going to be cutting in, they're going to be freeing the space in the wing, and we're going to be getting our width by our wingbacks. But we also have to keep in mind that the players, as I said earlier, are usually smarter than what we kind of expect of them in FM24. So using a wing back on attack or a support alone, as you can see in this tactic on the left, they're going to be doing kind of the same thing just because there is no one in front of them. So there is quite a lot of space in front of them. They're going to be utilizing it. They're going to be either crossing it more or trying to tuck in more and create something else. But the difference is not going to be great. And the only thing that I'm going to refrain from using is a wingback on attack with a winger in front of them. Because the winger is also going to be trying to hug the line. And then they're going to be kind of in their way with the wingback on attack. Every other combination out there, I'm not going to be really too bothered about it. But you have to keep in mind that if you want to emphasize the usage of a great attacking wingback, maybe you don't want to put anyone else in front of them. Because the moment that there is someone else in front of them, they're going to be smart about it. They are probably going to overlap less. They're going to be holding position more. So if they're smart, they will keep in mind that you've put someone else in front of them and they will respect it. And because we said overlap, it is time to talk about overlapping. And when I mean overlapping, I mean the instruction for your players in the tactic screen. Let's read what it actually says. It says, look for overlap instructs players on the left flank to hold on to the ball and look for an overlapping player in support. So, when we click this, it does not mean that the wingback is going to be overlapping. He's going to be overlapping depending on his duty. So, if he's on support or attack, he's probably going to be overlapping. This is an instruction to the other players. Be mindful. Be mindful. Your teammate, he's going to be running in the channel. He's going to be running on the wing. He will be there. Hold on to the ball and wait for him. Now, what's he going to do with the ball when he gets it? Probably cross it. If you want it to happen, just do it. But be mindful. Overlap does not mean that you're going to get the overlapping runs. It means that the players that are holding the ball around that area are going to be awaiting an overlap. They're going to be holding on to the ball. Maybe not making something more useful with it. So if you have an inside forward, do you really want your inside forward on attack, let's say a Salah? Do you really want Mohamed Salah to be actually holding onto the ball, waiting for Trent to actually arrive late on the right wing and cross it from there? Or do you really want Mohamed Salah to be cutting in and shooting it? My wild guess is you would probably like him to shoot, but that's me, that's me. If you want Alexander Arnold to cross it, Use overlap, right? Salah's gonna wait for Trent. He's gonna pass it to Trent. And Trent is gonna put in the cross. Now, I'm gonna be talking about a kind of a trick here. And it is a tactical trick. It is about using play down the left or playing down the right flank. And when you have an asymmetric tactic that's utilizing a wing back on attack on one side, one of the things that you can do is either instruct your players to move the ball towards that flank or the other flank and there are different implications now if you're in a situation where you're kind of losing a game and you're playing against a tough position that is tough to break down you can do two things i've tried them both they've both worked on different occasions now for example if in this situation these are my better goal scorers and this is an inside forward on attack maybe this guy here is maybe a deep line for some support. And I'm kind of looking for a way to get this guy into a goal scoring situation. Yet again, think about Mohamed Salah. If you are Liverpool and you're down, do you really want to give him space or do you really want to congest that part of the pitch and try to make him work his magic through 
a gazillion defenders. Maybe what you want to do is redirect attention. I swear to you, I kid you not, this is working. A lot of the times when I'm in the last 20 minutes of game where I need to score and this guy here is one of my better strikers, one of my better finishers, what I do is I go focus down the left. And this guy here, he's going to do a lot of work in the next 20 minutes. He's going to be supported by the other guys. This guy is going to probably be dropping a little bit deeper. Maybe something like this. But the main goal of this tactical change is to get the whole game shifted to the left of our attacking play. Which means that there's going to be a little bit, just a tiny little bit more space on the right. And this has actually worked absolutely amazing for me as I told you. Now, it's not always going to do the job for you, but it is a way for you to trick the opposition. You can do it the other way as well. So, for example, if this guy here is kind of shooting blanks, he's never scoring for you, he's maybe someone that is good in making assists, but he's never scoring, you may want to do the opposite thing. You may want to go in here and say, okay, focus down the right, so the ball is going to get switched to the right flank, everybody on the pitch is going to get slightly shifted to that side, this includes the opposition defense, so this is going to free up space for this guy here. And if he is someone that is actually capable of uh, delivering a great cross, someone that he's very smart about creating things, maybe you want to put a shadow striker in here, like your main attacking threat. You can do this. Maybe this guy gets here or like, think about it. There is so many different situations where you can actually shift the play on the other side when you're consciously making a decision that you expect the most dangerous things to be actually happening on the other side of the field and you're consciously trying to move the ball to the other side of the pitch so that the guys that are more dangerous are going to get some space okay before we get to the final chapter of this video and while we're still on the tactical side of it and how we use wing backs we actually have to talk about two things first of all combinations of weak backs if you are the most amazing attacking club in the world or you're a team that actually have really great wing backs on attack and you want to utilize them then maybe you can actually free the space for them on the wings by doing something like this and you can utilize two wing backs on attack you gotta be aware this is quite aggressive and we're gonna discuss why in a moment so they are often gonna be out of position when you lose the ball and they will have a lot of ground to cover if they're capable of doing it it's absolutely perfectly fine you're gonna be finding this is a blessing in disguise they're gonna be delivering a lot for you in attacking positions and if they are capable of doing their defensive work cool stuff now most of the time you're gonna be slightly less attacking when you're trying to pick your wingback roles and i'm gonna suggest you either use a wingback on attack and wingback on support or you straight directly go to wingback on support and defend or attack and defend now why is that because the last thing that we have to talk about is how your defensive shape looks like when you're using these roles and as you said previously when you're building up your play you're generally going to look for two things. Having a W that is either 2-3 or 3-2. What does this mean? It means that, for example, now, let's have a look at this tactic. We have a Segundo Volante. We are now in a slow build-up phase. The Segundo Volante, as we discussed previously, he's a runner. He's not really someone that's going to be trying to be sticking around, drifting in between defenders and wingbacks, and maybe waiting for a pass. He's going to be a runner. He's going to be usually occupying a more advanced position now what does the 2-3 and 3-2 thing mean usually when you have a holding midfielder he's gonna be trying to drop in between your defenders or at least be close to them and be there for them the wing backs on support and attack they will usually be holding this position when you're building up slowly from the back they will not be running too far forward that's good they will not be doing it. They will be conscious of the fact that they have some responsibility in the build-up, so they will be somewhere here. Now, depending on your defensive midfielder role or your holding role, 
he's either gonna stay here or he's gonna even drop further back now if we have let's say a half back he's most of the time gonna drop in between here and this is not a w if you can see it so you have to be mindful of that this is a w this is a w so we're gonna have a two three build up the other way you can go with that is a 3-2 build up so for example if you're having a win back on defend as we saw earlier he's gonna be staying a little bit deeper and your whole defense is gonna be shifting towards the space that is left by let's say a wing back on attack so all of your players they're not gonna be here they're gonna be moving a little bit to the other side so when you're building up from the back with this guy is a wing back on defense and this guy is wing back on attack they're gonna be shifting something like this they're gonna be trying to occupy the spaces that make sense and that's why it's ultra important for you to be mindful of the holding dm role someone that's going to be there and is going to be helping you build from the back this is kind of a w it's kind of skewed but it depends on where the players are and you still have this time not two three you have a three two build up and this is one thing to have in mind therefore the last thing we're going to be discussing in terms of tactics before we move on is covering a wing back that's going too far forward and everything i want you to think about right now is jordan henderson trent alexander arnold what did club do there now okay trent you're great at crossing you're providing attacking numbers for us you're very useful in attack therefore we're gonna find a way cover you at the back and what did this club do jordan henderson slotted in position or james miller sometimes someone from the midfield was dropping a little bit back and was actually holding the position that trent was supposed to occupy when that happened now as i said wing backs they generally tend to play a little bit more in defense than what trent alexander arnold does so the thing that they will need is actually someone to hold the ground for them while they're trying to get back because they will try they will try and now that's why if you paid close attention to the tactics that i've been showing you the ones that were asymmetric most of the time when i had a wing back on attack on one side the holding player in midfield was on their side so it's not the same if i have a segundo volante here and a deep playing playmaker there because the implying playmaker here he's gonna be covering a lot of the time for the wing back when he is bombarding forward and being part of our attack so we have to be mindful in attack yes this guy is going to be here acting as a winger he's going to be someone like david beckham he's going to be sometimes cutting in he's going to be sometimes crossing it he's going to be really important in our attacking phase of the game but when we lose the ball he's going to be here and there is no one defending this area so we're going to be exposed in that side and that's why that's why you have to always be mindful when you use attacking wingbacks who is covering the areas of the pitch that they are leaving open when they are running forward and last but not least let's talk a bit about player traits now from everything we've said so far it's kind of obvious they are hung in the line so every trait regarding running down the left running down the right kind of suitable for them other traits that may be important and suitable to them is play one twos so if you have a wing back on attack you want them really to be doing this thing because there's gonna be quite a lot of space in front of them not covered by someone else on the wing so playing maybe one twos with teammates is something that is smart about it if they're good at passing and have good vision i would usually love to give them some passing trade it could be switching to the other side talking about previously regarding utilizing the left or utilizing the right can be very very good there and they're also sometimes very useful by playing true balls if you have someone that is very good at creating chances maybe playing through balls is his thing oh my god how will i forget we are doing the repurposing players for different positions and roles we have to do it this is the thing that i still consider one of the most important things we do as managers in fm24 and we're gonna start by the most mundane one of them and it is repurposing center halves 
as wingbacks on defend. Now, why am I doing this? Because a lot of the times in my saves, I get a wonder kid that is a center half, but he is 170 something centimeters tall. And honestly, it's not just me. I'm pretty sure you all hate your center defenders to be shorter than 190, 186, 187. Therefore, what you can do with them is not really quite clear. One of the things that I can suggest is you retrain them to be a wingback on the fend. Now, I'm showing you Nathan Ake. Joško Gvardio is in that same category. Are they ever going to be as good as Robertson? No, never. But Nathan Ake, he used to be a center half for... The majority of his career and now what does make him a good wing back on defend well he's a great defender he is very capable of doing the job in the air he is quite good in terms of work rate teamwork okay stamina great pace so he can cover he can do the thing he is also a competent player on the ball therefore a wing back on defend Nathan Ake, Josko Gvardio, your wonder kid that is too short to be a center half, but he's supposed to be a center half. But if he's a wonder kid, he's obviously going to be also capable of being a ball playing defender, which means at least some dribbling, at least some vision, at least some passing. So wing back on defend works like a charm. All right, we're going to continue with my favorite. And a couple of seasons ago, I would have been proud to say that I've invented this, but now Carlo Ancelotti ruined it by making Eduardo Camavinga a left wing back and by doing Fred Valverde a right wing back. Now, what's the idea behind it? Every single great athletic DM in the world, you can make him an absolutely amazing wing back on support and attack. What are the skills that makes this happen? Now, first of all, pick a player. Pick a great young player, someone with a lot of pace, someone with a lot of athleticism, someone with a lot of work rate, someone with a lot of uh, great teamwork, someone great at defending, but also being maybe a great deep line playmaking. Great deep line playmakers, if they're athletic enough to cover the ground. Best wingbacks in the world. Best wingbacks in the world. I'm gonna have to make another video where I show you how I just create the best wingbacks in the world in every single save that I play, just by getting the best young talent in DMs, utilizing the guys that are maybe shorter-ish, or when I have too many of them and I'm just repurposing them for wingbacks, amazing stuff. Great athletic DMs are the best wingbacks ever, and if they're not super tall, I'd say that they better become wingbacks because they can be more prolific and they can influence games more than they can do in DM roles. Last but not least, fairly rarely you're going to witness players that are considered to be defensive wingers or someone that is capable or wanting to play as a winger but has defensive stats. So if you ever find a winger, be it an attacking winger or just a winger, wide midfielder who has defensive capabilities, has good acceleration, good teamwork, good vision, good work rate, you can repurpose them as a wing back and this is gonna be in today's video it was an amazingly long one i did not expect it so there was a lot of things that i didn't manage to cover i'm sorry about that but it would have been an hour and a half long thank you very much for watching if you have anything to add please leave in the comments below i'm pretty sure that other people are gonna appreciate it if you haven't seen the segundo volante video check it out it is definitely fun i'm gonna love to see you again bye bye Thank <laughs> you.